Hello everybody and welcome back to my, I think, episode 3 of my new Let's Play series for City Skylines. I hope you enjoyed that little intro. I know I enjoyed making it, so I hope you enjoyed watching it. I thought it was a nice little recap of basically what I've done so far in the city. So, uh, you may have noticed that I've bought a new block of land. So, I've actually bought maybe four or five new blocks of land around the whole city. So, basically those will be the areas that I want to restrain myself to build within. So, I just thought I'd buy them all now and get that out of the way. So, today I'm mostly focusing on industrial space and also um, a train, train stations, train hub, and also the harbour. So, um, I decided to start to build the industrial area way over here because of two reasons. Uh, the first reason being that I can do a uh, I can do their own uh, entrance and exit ramp onto the highway there specifically for the industrial uh, traffic use and also because it's right next to um, a good area for a harbour so and and also because it's away from all of the residential areas so it may be a little bit far away but it'll be okay once I put in some um, public transport so somebody asked me a few days ago which is better an intersection or a roundabout and so if you see what I'm doing here I'm sure you can kind of guess my answer because with an intersection it's traffic lights right so um, the traffic lights stop, then all the cars build up, build up, build up, build up, and then eventually the light is green, then everyone goes quickly, 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 and only some make it through the intersection, and then the rest have to wait. So with a roundabout, at least there's a constant flow, even if it's a slow flow, there's still a constant flow of movement. And so whenever I have a main exit and entrance, like what I'm doing here, I always connect it to a roundabout on either side, because the traffic, there's, the traffic is going in so many different directions that an intersection it would just become too congested. So, I would highly recommend more roundabouts. Um, I would put more roundabouts in the residential areas, but I kind of struggle in the game to make small roundabouts for some reason. So I usually don't, even though I'd like to. Also, you'll notice here I have two 
small lanes meeting and where they meet I actually make it into two lanes so instead of those two single lanes joining into one lane I actually made it so they both join into a two lane road going into the roundabout so that would help ease the flow and the congestion as well. So this road here, it's a quick exit off the roundabout and then, so this road will be specifically for the use of industrial area only and, in, and industrial traffic only. And also from the, the harbour as well, when it's eventually built. It's also a good idea to have the, some offices right nearby your industrial area, just in case they are somehow related or working together so they don't have too far to travel, as you'll see in a moment. And you may notice right there, I add in a two-way lane into the industrial area. And some reason, for some reason it breaks, I don't know why. I don't know what happened right there. But anyway, as I was saying, um, since all the traffic is coming off the roundabout, I add in a little two-lane entrance like what I'm doing right there so then instead of going so they wouldn't have to go all the way down to the avenue which is the part with the trees they can quickly exit right there into the kind of back lanes of the industrial area also you might notice the avenue there, when I go back to it, um, as soon as they go up into the avenue I have the first road on the left is also a two-way, one-way road. So there's n no traffic coming onto the avenue right at the start of the avenue. All of the traffic coming onto the avenue actually goes to the back of the industrial area and comes straight down the middle of the industrial area. Hopefully that makes sense, if not just go back and have a look and you might see what I mean. And then you'll notice again that I do the the one way at the bottom of the avenue just to ease the traffic when they first come onto the avenue because I don't want a lot of traffic to congest right at the start of the avenue because all that traffic will congest back onto that greyish main road and then back onto the roundabout. So like I said, it's good to have the office spaces nearby, so that's what I've done right there. And so there's easy access to the harbour and easy access to uh, the industrial area and also easy access to the highway as well.
not that there's many pedestrians in this area, but I thought it would just be uh, visually appealing just to add in some pedestrian access. And also because I've been experimenting with more pathways and trees in industrial areas just to make it seem nicer, I guess. So of course I add in the police station and fire station, not near the main roads, but somewhere towards the back, but they still have easy access to the main roads for quick distribution. So at this point I decided that since I've extended the industrial area way over here, I thought it would be a good idea to move the power plant away from the residential area because um, it's probably not the nicest thing to have nearby a residential area. You may notice that this road here probably isn't the best. I actually fixed that up later. Um, I'll show that in the next video because I don't think I recorded it. But the issue is that there's traffic coming on and also there's traffic going off and they're mixing into the same position which can be quite an issue. So I don't, don't pay attention to that, that's a bad example. Also this road here, since I used the four lane small road and so I made it so if they want to go to the roundabout they actually have to turn left so otherwise the traffic goes directly around the roundabout so it doesn't mix in with the roundabout traffic. Also quickly I'd like to mention that uh, a lot of people have been asking for my mods and asset list, not that I really use many but um, that's available now so check in the comments, it'll probably be in the top comment, I'll pin it to the top where my list is. But um, don't get your hopes up too high, there's not too many, just probably some key mods that I think you need in the game. So at this point I decided I need to extend the train line over to the industrial area. But I had to kind of do some weird angles right here because I have to first of all get over the water then get over the, um, the four lane road and then I also have to get under the highway as well. And instead of... Um, the train line mixing in with the road, I actually go over the road just because I want that road to be quite a fast direct access from the industrial area to the residential area without any interference from the train. So 
so I was trying to do trying to do the train here and what I was trying to do is I want the train line to connect like that and then all the traffic coming to that train station I wanted it not to interfere with the train line at all so the train uh, not the train the road access is not interfering with the train at all because in the future this area will become quite busy so having a train line where they all have to wait is kind of annoying and it always just creates issues so I avoid a train crossing as much as I can. Also at this point, I decided, well since there's going to be a lot of traffic, it might be good to have just a quick little exit route to the roundabout for quick exit, instead of mixing in with all the other traffic on the other road. And I add more lanes there since there's going to be more traffic um, joining into that area. So I feel like I kind of um, don't pay much attention to this side of the the river just yet. It's kind of just like, oh, I need residential, so let's just do a quick, base, quick basic grid and just give them what they want. Yeah, so as you can see, I've bought all the all the land. So uh, it's basically what I'm going to allow myself to build within, and because otherwise I'll just keep building out and out and going in crazy directions. So and so there's still a, a huge residential demand. So I decide to uh, extend the little what would you call that? A little freeway, a little motorway which has a quick little connection to what will be the future downtown area 
just trying to get it in a straight line there and then it'll zoom back across the river back to the future people on the other side of the river right there So I think in the next episode I'll start to put in some, some buses, probably just like two or three bus lines because um, the industrial area, since it's considerably far away from the residential area, um, I probably need to get some kind of easier access over to there and I'll go through uh, how I like to do bus lines because I'm quite particular with how I do that because of the traffic the bus lines create. So I always try to avoid certain specific things with bus lines, as you'll see in the next episode. And once again, I'm once again I'm just putting kind of roads all over the place, not doing too much of a grid because um, my first city skylines video was basically a huge city with a massive grid. So I'm trying to do something a bit different but still with kind of basic grid systems as you can see there but I didn't want to do it like a, a hardcore grid because I, honestly I just find it more interesting when it's more free-flowing and you just kind of see what happens and how it turns out and also you have more to work with as well lots of interest, interesting little curves and um, you can do little interesting housing estates and yeah, it's good. But you'll still find that for the downtown area and other small commercial and industrial areas, I usually do some kind of grid system right in the main area. That's just my preference, but um, yeah, and then fur the further you go out into the suburbs, the less grid-like it is, it becomes really more free with curvy um, roads, curvy housing estates, less density as you can see there as it goes up the mountain it becomes less grid-like and more curvy and less dense. Also, um, let me know what you think of the city so far because I'm actually liking how it's turning out. Well, it's not really a city, it's a little, let's just say a little town, a little urban area. But um, yeah, I'm quite enjoying how it's looking and the map, I think the map really makes it look so much better because um, it's just a good map really. I like the shapes, I like the colours, I like the trees. So yeah, let me know what you think so far. And if you have any suggestions what you'd like me to do in the city, so yeah, let me know. Notice I don't make too many connections on that main road, that main road there, that four lane road, because in the future that's going to become quite busy. So I want to limit as many small road connections as I can. And also I want to avoid putting too many low density residential buildings right on the main road. So I'm just adding adding in a couple of education facilities, a school, high school, um, a little medical building. Probably not a good place to put a cemetery, but actually next to my primary school there was a cemetery and a, um, I think it's got a crematorium. It didn't bother me. But for some people I'm sure it's weird. And so again, more little uh, pedestrian access routes just to make um, just to make it easier and encourage walkability. And also, if you're encouraging walkability in real life, and I'm not sure about if it works in the game, but if you're encouraging walkability in real life, you're also 
uh, encouraging a better lifestyle, a healthier lifestyle. So there's been studies that show people um, get less diseases, less um, illnesses just from walking more in general. So I think I might end the video right here. Um, don't forget to like, comment and, sub and subscribe. Uh, feel free to ask any questions. I'll be happy to answer them and I will see you all in the next video. I hope you enjoyed watching. Bye for now.